So yet again, you're paying for that customizable LCD display. It, it looks really cool and it's a ton of fun. You can do so much with it. Is it really practical? In some cases, yes, because you can see your liquid temperatures. You can also monitor your temperatures for your CPU and GPU. But if you're just putting GIFs on it or just making memes out of it, I'm uh, not really. Who am I kidding? This is totally an epic poggers moment. Hey guys, Tony here from Tony Tech Bytes, and these are the new NZXT Kraken coolers that I've been using for the past two weeks, and I'm very impressed with the performance as well as the aesthetics. So let's first start off with the unboxing as well as the installation. Installing an NZXT Kraken cooler is a fairly straightforward process. Each box includes a fairly detailed manual except the Kraken X53 RGB version which for some reason doesn't include a paper manual. It includes a card that has a QR code and you have to use your phone to scan it for an online manual. And in some ways this is good for the environment because you obviously use less paper but uh, I mean it's a little bit less convenient because you have to take out your phone. It's still a fairly thorough manual nonetheless, and all these coolers support modern Intel and AMD brackets. I'll link NZXT's website in the description down below for your convenience. Okay, so let's first start off with the NZXT Kraken X53. I purchased this around February, so nine months ago, and I've been using it ever since. It's a 240mm AIO liquid cooler with an aluminum radiator, and it also includes the 7th generation ASUSEC pump, as well as two 120mm ARP fans from NZXT. You get pretty good performance, it's not too loud, and the cap on the pump is rotatable by 30 degree increments. So you don't have to install the pump block in a specific way, you can move it around as much as you want to. And you don't have to worry about RAM clearance because you can easily rotate the cap, which is awesome to see. Because I just hate looking at builds where the NZXT logo is crooked, it looks so ugly. Anyways, the X53 retails for $129.99 USD. So let's go on to the NZXT Kraken X53 RGB edition. It's literally a Kraken X53 but with RGB fans. Specifically two NZXT Air RGB2 fans. These are the 120mm versions. These fans aren't high static pressure optimized so they aren't ideal for radiator solutions. They're better suited as case fans where they can move air without having any blockage. Uh, so we'll talk more about that later. It retails for $159.99 USD. That's a $30 premium over the regular X53. We'll talk more about the benchmarks as well as some shortcomings later on. Now for the Kraken Z53, one of the best coolers in this lineup, arguably because of the aesthetic performance. Wait, aesthetic performance? Is that even, that's not even a thing. Uh, anyways, it's part of the Kraken Z series along with the Kraken Z63 and Z73. So it includes a 2.36 inch customizable LCD display. And I just have to say really briefly, it is super bright and fairly sharp, especially if you can find some detailed GIFs. Most GIFs that I downloaded weren't very high resolution, so they look pretty pixelated, but I did find one, it was a SpongeBob one that looked very sharp on that screen, and uh, I'll show some B-roll right now. The display is super sharp and very bright. So just like the X53, the Z53 is a 240mm AIO liquid cooler, features the 7th generation ASTEC pump, as well as a 27mm thick aluminum radiator. It's going to retail for $229.99 USD, you're paying a premium for that customizable LCD display. And speaking of that, let's talk more about it. So, you can customize every part of it, you can upload GIFs, you can check your temperatures, for your CPU, GPU, you can see your clock speed for your CPU. I believe you can also see your GPU's clock speed. You can see your liquid temperature for the Kraken Z-Series cooler. There's also an RGB version where you can see the NZXT logo as well as an RGB ring. I'll just show some B-roll showing all the features in NZXT Cam. Speaking of NZXT Cam, make sure to download it if you're using these NZXT coolers because without it you won't be able to customize the pump speed as well as the lighting control. And it's a fairly intuitive and minimalistic program that I really like using on all my builds. Even if I don't really use NZXT products, I love just having Cam. And honestly, it's probably the cleanest PC monitoring program I've ever downloaded. I mean sure, past versions of NZXT Cam were really buggy, but I have to say they've improved it drastically. I think maybe they've hired some new programmers to fix it up. Other lighting products worked perfectly fine, whereas before, I think was one or two years ago, if I changed a specific lighting effect for one of my LED strips or my Era RGB2 fans, they didn't really change until like maybe five seconds later. So I have to say NZXT Cam is a lot more responsive than before as well. So let's go back to the GIFs. You can upload a lot of GIFs. You can upload as many GIFs as you want to, I think. Actually, there might be a limit, but uh, there is a size limit. Make sure that they're 20 megabytes or less in file size. And I logged into NZXT Cam, so I stored more than 10 GIFs in there and actually saves it. So that's the best part. Once I upload a GIF there, I can just delete them. So I had a ton of fun experimenting with this LCD display. I converted a picture of Linus, a JPEG, to a GIF file, and he, now he's just sitting on my water block, which looks so cool. I also found it really funny when the fly landed on Vice President Mike Pence's head during the US Vice Presidential debate, and of course I just put it there to be a meme. I mean, 
It's pretty funny, a fly landing on someone's head when they're not even aware of it. And I also found it really funny when the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, uh, pulled out an RTX 3080 from the oven during his RTX 30 series presentation. And I got the gift from NVIDIA, so I just put it on my water block. Okay, enough with the LCD display stuff. Let's talk about performance. So I'm gonna pull out my phone. I wrote down all my numbers in my notes app. So I have an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X CPU with uh, precision boost overdrive disabled. I overclocked my 3900X to 4.3 gigahertz on all cores at a core voltage of 1.325 volts. I'm also using the ASUS RG Strix X570i motherboard. It's a mini ITX board with Arctic MX4 thermal paste for all the coolers. I just used a piece size amount in the middle of the IHS and when I took them out, I made sure that the entire IHS was covered and sure enough, they were. So I use Cinebench R20. I hear Cinebench R23 was actually released pretty recently, but Cinebench R20 is tried and true, so whatever. And I made it loop for 900 seconds, which I believe is 15 minutes, just enough to heat up the liquid inside the loop. The ambient room temperature was about 62.1 degrees Fahrenheit or 16.7 degrees Celsius. I also locked all the fans to 1700 RPM as well as the pump to 100%, which is 2800 RPM using N60 cam. So with the regular Kraken X53 with the front panel on in the N60 H210, I was getting an average temperature of around 78.3 degrees Celsius, and I also used Hardware Info 64 to calculate this. With the front panel off and the dust filter still on to simulate a mesh case, I was getting about 76.9 degrees Celsius, which is a fairly decent reduction in temperature by removing the front panel. Now with the Kraken X53 with the RGB fan, I was getting about 83.8 degrees Celsius with the front panel on and about 81.5 degrees Celsius with the front panel off. The X53 with the RGB fans doesn't perform as well as the regular X53 with the Air P fans because the N60 Air RGB2 fans aren't high static pressure optimized. They are airflow fans, so they're designed to move air fast, more so than move large amounts of air, especially when there's something impeding the airflow path, such as a radiator. You can definitely see that with the design of the fan blades. The Air P fans have thicker fan blades to move larger amounts of air and push it through a radiator, whereas with the Air RGB2 fans, they aren't really optimized for high static pressure applications, such as with the radiator or at the front of a case where there's a front panel blocking off a little bit of airflow and air has to turn around before entering the case. I kind of wish NZXT made high static pressure optimized RGB fans such as the Air P fans but in RGB version. So maybe just make like an RGB ring illumination around the Air P fans because most companies, I believe even Corsair has airflow RGB fans as well as high static pressure optimized fans that have RGB included that come with their radiators. So you have a specific set of fans for radiators and a specific set of fans for case fans, but they're pretty much just strapped on regular Air RGB2 fans onto the radiator and call it a day. A four to five degrees Celsius difference is noticeable, but if you're not planning on overclocking and if you don't need a truly silent system, it's not really a big deal if you prioritize aesthetics over anything. However, one situation where the N60 Kraken X53 RGB version might excel is if you use it inside the case instead of at the front. So what I'm saying is maybe if you used it at a top mounted position, which doesn't fit in the H210, such as with the H710, so if you mounted it at the top, you wouldn't have as much obstruction in front of the Air RGB2 fans, and it could more easily push air through the radiator. And finally, with the Z53 with the front panel on, I was getting about 78.5 degrees Celsius, and with the front panel off, but the dust filter still on, to yet again simulate a mesh front panel case, I was getting about 77.1 degrees Celsius. It's pretty much the same as the regular X53. It's using the same 120 millimeter ARP fans and the same seventh generation Acetec pump. However, I tested the Z53 last, so maybe the ambient room temperature increased just a little bit, and it's still within a margin of error, so it's not a very significant difference from the X53. So now that performance and benchmarks are over, let's talk a little bit more about the coolers. One thing I want to mention about all NZXT Kraken coolers is that they have really durable nylon tubing, and I've actually found this to be very useful for cramped situations, such as mini ITX cases. So I actually used the Kraken X53 in the Loki Ghost S1 mini ITX case, and the tubes were pretty much cramped in there. I had to bend them down a little bit to fit in there, and they held up pretty well. Performance was still pretty good, 
And as you can see in the H210, I flipped the radiator so that the tubes are facing down, which is an optimal configuration. If you have your radiator in the front so that air bubbles don't build up in the pump, and you can see that the tubing actually touches the NZXT cable management bar. However, it's not a very big deal because the tubing is very solid, and I'm not worried at all about the tubing. The X53 is a great cooler, and I used it for the past nine months. Performance is pretty much the same as day one. However, if you compare it to these coolers, it's a little bit bland. I mean, you do get that awesome infinity mirror design on the water block, but if you look at the customizable LCD display on the Z53, it kind of looks a little lackluster, if I'm going to be honest. Of course, you do have to pay more for the other coolers, and you don't necessarily get better performance. I would say that the X53 is great all-around cooler. Don't get me wrong, the design is still really nice. You get a clean NDXT logo, which you can actually turn off and the infinity mirror design, as well as great performance with the seventh generation a stack pump. Now with the X53 RGB version, I would not recommend this cooler if you plan on putting it at the front of your case, if you don't have a mesh front panel because it's a little bit restrictive. They aren't high side pressure optimized, so they aren't ideal for that. I would only suggest getting the X53 RGB version if you have a mesh front panel case and you want to see RGB fans in front, or if you want to put it at the top of your case where there's less obstruction for the Air RGB2 fans. Now the Z53, if you were looking at the Z63 or the Z7 or the Z73 and it won't fit inside your case, or you just don't want to spend as much money, but you still want that customizable LCD display, NZXT finally has a 240mm version, which is officially supported in the NZXT H210. Supposedly, you can actually fit a 280mm radiator as well as fans uh, inside this case, but it's not officially supported on the website, and you kind of have to cram it in there. So yet again, you're paying for that customizable LCD display. It looks really cool, and it's a ton of fun. You can do so much with it. Is it really practical? In some cases, yes, because you can see your liquid temperatures. You can also monitor your temperatures for your CPU and GPU. But if you're just putting GIFs on it or just making memes out of it, uh, not really. You're getting pretty much the same performance as the X53, but it sure is a lot of fun to mess around with, and it is definitely an eye catcher. So thank you all so much for watching this video of the X53, the X53 RGB version, as well as the Z53. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like and subscribe to support my content. I really appreciate it. And if you want to check out any of these coolers, I'll link them in the description down below for your convenience. And also thanks to NCXC for sending these over, as well as with the H210.